Give me justice, O God, and plead my cause against a nation that is faithless. From the deceitful and cunning, rescue me, for you, O God, are my strength. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You are very welcome to Mass today on the 5th Sunday of Lent. And you'll notice that the statues are covered now, so we're coming closer to the passion and death of Christ, ultimately, of course, leading to the resurrection. So to prepare ourselves to celebrate Mass this evening, we call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are word made flesh in splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of our sin and division. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, Jeremiah. See, the days are coming, it is the Lord who speaks, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, but not a covenant like the one I made with their ancestors on the day I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. They broke that covenant of mine, so I had to show them who was master. It is the Lord who speaks. No, this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel when those days arrive. It is the Lord who speaks. Deep within them I will plant my law, writing it on their hearts. Then I will be their God and they shall be my people. There will be no further need for neighbor to teach neighbor, or brother to say to brother, learn to know the Lord. No, they will all know me, the least, no less than the greatest. It is the Lord who speaks, since I will forgive their iniquity and never call their sins to mind. The word of the Lord. Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness. In your compassion blot out my offense. O oh, wash me more and more from my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. A pure heart create for me, O God. Put a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, nor deprive me of your Holy Spirit. Give me again the joy of your help. With the spirit of fervor sustain me, that I may teach transgressors your ways, and sinners may return to you. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. During his life on earth, Christ offered up prayer and entreaty aloud and in silent tears to the one who had the power to save him out of death, and he submitted so humbly that his prayer was heard. Although he was God, he learned to obey through suffering, but having been made perfect, he became for all who obey him the source of eternal salvation. The Word of the Lord. Glory to you, O Christ, you are the word of God. If a man serves me, says the Lord, he must follow me. Wherever I am, my servant will be there too. Glory to you, O Christ, you are the word of God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. 
Among those who went up to Jerusalem for the festival were some Greeks. They approached Philip, who came from Bethsaida in Galilee, and they put this request to him. Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew, and Andrew and Philip together went to tell Jesus. Jesus replied to them, Now the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you most solemnly, unless a wheat grain falls on the ground and dies, it remains only a single grain, but if it dies, it yields a rich harvest. Anyone who loves his life loses it, and anyone who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If a man serves me, he must follow me. Wherever I am, my servant will be there too. If anyone serves me, my father will honor him. Now my soul is troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this very reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. A voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. People standing by who heard this said it was a clap of thunder. Others said it was an angel speaking to him. Jesus answered, It was not for my sake that this voice came, but for yours. Now, sentence is being passed on this world. Now the prince of this world is to be overthrown. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I shall draw all people to myself. By these words, he indicated the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. A very wealthy society lady died and she went to the next world. As she looked about, she noticed that her maid, who had died some time before her, was living in a very beautiful mansion, while she herself was assigned to a rather insignificant little house. And she immediately complained to St. Peter, Don't you know who I am? I am so-and-so. And yet, I find that my maid has much more splendid accommodation than I have. What's going on? St. Peter replied, I'm sorry to disappoint you, madam, but you see, we can only build out of what you send us up here, and I'm afraid this was the best we could do for you. So the question we could ask is, how much material are we sending on ahead of us? The only supplies we can use for building this house are those selfless acts of love which typify our daily lives. And if we are meagre in that department, then the material sent up won't account for, mu for much. I'm sure we all know people who rarely put themselves first. The welfare of others, whether they're in their own families or in the community, takes priority. And it's not done out of show either. It's part and parcel of who they are. It's in their very bones, in their very soul. And then there are people whose lives revolve around themselves, where the needs of others take a back seat. But that can be reversed. Our attendance at Mass each Sunday should inspire us to imitate our Saviour, who became last of all and servant of all. The more we journey towards God, the further we travel away from self. It's the grain of wheat which, wheat which falls on the ground and dies which produces much fruit. But giving our lives in love doesn't mean we impose ourselves on people with preconceived notions of what we think is good for them. In this way, we can certainly overlook their real needs and be less than helpful. But it doesn't have to be that way. Our giving can be done in a very unassuming way, 
through a myriad of small and often unnoticed ways. Jesus asks us to be careful not to parade our good deeds before people to win their esteem. There's very little dying to ourselves in that. I think when it comes to love, small is beautiful. A smile, a pat on the back, a word of encouragement, a listening ear, a thank you card, a lift to mass, all can speak far more eloquently the language of love than the grand or the big grand gesture. I often think about Simon of Cyrene who seemed to appear from nowhere to help Jesus carry his cross and then he slips back into the crowd with no mention of him again. But we know we mention him every time we make the stations, particularly at this time of the year. And what about Veronica, who wiped the sweat and blood off his face? A small gesture, we might say, but just what Jesus needed. And then there's Joseph of Arimathea, who gave his own tomb to Jesus without any song or dance. When Jesus needed these people most, they were all in the right place, at the right time, with the right kind of help. Jesus, as we know, often comes to us in different shapes and guises, and at times not of our choosing. When we put our own program on hold and focus on him, unlike the woman in the opening story, God won't run short of material for the building of our heavenly home. Blessed are you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice, through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time 
for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may pra praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will 
who will live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Everyone who lives and believes in me will not die forever, says the Lord. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Bless, O Lord, your people, who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what at your prompting they desire they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Go now in the peace of Christ. <laughs>